start Googling all these things, come across the mom's obituary. And I'm like, okay, I'll just give it a shot. Call the funeral home. Like, hey, Crystal Tran, realtor, you know, you've actually serviced a funeral here name, blah, 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 blah. Her daughter reached out to me and is actually wanting me to sell the property, but I don't have her phone number anymore. Welcome to another episode of the Real Tea Chicago podcast. I'm Jamie. And I'm Terrence. And we are here to share with you the most interesting, wild, crazy stories that we can find in Chicago real estate. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. Find us on Instagram, TikTok, Reddit. Fill out our form if you want to share a story with us or just get in touch with us. And today, our guest is Crystal Tran of the Crystal Tran team. And I'll let you do a little more in depth. Oh, yeah. Tell us, yeah. Just like a quickie. A little quickie elevator pitch. Yeah, like what you would find on Google. I mean, I've been in real estate since 2011, 2012, got licensed in California, and then moved back home, got into real estate here, started with a company called Canig Stray. Yeah. Do you kind of remember that? I was a part of Berkshire Hathaway when they were birth- Berkshire Hathaway Koenig Rubloff Home Services Realty Group. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> the mouthful. That is a lot. Yeah. So started the team in like 20s, 20s. Oh, my God. I don't even remember now. I think 2017, 2018. Okay. It's been a few years, but uh, we're a big team now. We're probably like 14 that's huge. Yeah, 14, 14, 14 peeps. Yeah, and, and how growing. is that connected with, um, I saw the like Hunt Chicago. Is that all the same thing or are they Yeah, different? so Hunt Chicago is our website okay. and um, kind of is like our second identity to our team name. Everyone's email ends in Hunt Chicago. Okay. So it's a website that I've personally have built out myself and work on and continue to wow. work on. So. It's a little bit of my spiel. Like I have a lot of like internet uh, SEO, like knowledge and website building and so marketing and all that stuff. So that's kind of my jam, you know, and that's kind of gotten me to where I am today with my team and reputation. Hopefully a good one. (laughs) Did you learn all these skills in college? I kind no no actually because I didn't no. I didn't take part in this class right that you so are talking about now. So for those listening, Crystal and Terrence went to college together. We did link those two. Not guys too long for ago, you. like no, just yeah. seventeen years ago. Seven. <laughs> Jeez, God, wait a minute, hold on. Yeah, it's yeah, cause seven or seventeen. Teen. Terrence just started to appear in all of my classes. Oh, really? And then we're like, okay, we're going to be friends. Yep. Every single class. Yeah. Don't you miss when it was that easy to make friends? You're like, oh, I see you every day in the same I'm place. pretty sure Terrence sat behind out? me and he was like tapping me on the shoulders. <laughs> and I turned around and I was like, like, hi. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> no, it was probably literally like that. It was literally probably like, hey, yep, I'm that's, Terrence. That's kind of what I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, we've been in each other's lives for a long time. A long time. Yeah. And here we are in our second lives and our second I careers. Know. Mm-hmm. And That's true. All together again. That's yeah, because you were you were in. I used hair. to be a hairstylist. Yep. Really. Yeah. Yep. I used to work in Winnetka, and kind of a short little story, which I've never talked to Mike Golden about, but I used to do his wife's hair. When she would go to all these like galas and things like that. So I used to blow dry her hair. I used to like cut his daughter's bangs when she was younger. And I never knew that the girl's hair that I was doing was Mike Golden's. Like Mike Golden was her husband and that he had owned at properties. And so for it to come full circle now. And I'm just like, I'm at at properties and I love it. And it just, it feels like home in so many different ways. You know, I love small world connections. like have Have you told him that? No, I haven't. You I know. haven't had the chance to, but I tell everybody else. So I'm sure he probably knows <laughs> He now. probably knows. That'd be a cool story to tell. People like, just yeah. keep coming up to him and be like, oh, so I heard Crystal used to yeah, cut your wife's like, hair. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. See, small world. And true story. I trained her once. That she, is she true. She never came back. No. I never came out of the squat position. I was literally... <laughs> the, he tried to have me do this like squat bar thing. and I literally could not get it up. I remember it was... Mm. very painful yeah she never came back i told him i didn't want to compete he's like no you gotta like lift this i go. didn't try Sounds to make like you such compete. a man thing it's like no i don't want to drink I don't egg whites do it, but... first of all um 
Pee. You don't have to drink egg whites, but you should, because they're amazing. Excuse me. Oh, Old place. Don't spill them. Do you want me to cook that for you before? <laughs> like, for you a want lot? a frittata? Oh, that would be really good. <laughs> Kirkland, huh? Have you tried other brands? Yes. Are they as good or is like Kirkland? Well, there's the no brand. difference. As long as they're pasteurized. But since I drink one a day, I buy them in bulk from Costco. Like last week when I was in Arizona, mm -hmm. I had to go to Safeway. And I didn't even look to see what brand it was, but same thing. I'm going to cut you off right there. Crystal, we're ready to hear your two truths and a lie. Oh, Ooh, yep. So two truths and a lie. I have to like remember this. In no particular <laughs> order. I have them right. here for you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, two truths and a lot. So I have had to pack up a cellar on the final walkthrough. Um, I have found a homeless man living in a unit my client was looking at. Last one being I had a whole inspection with someone sleeping in the bedroom, like a one-bedroom condo inspection while the tenant was sleeping in the bedroom. Okay. Uh, Jamie Book, would you like to go first? Um, I'm going to take your approach on it as I want two and three to be true. Hmm. These are all so feasible. <laughs> that I this is what realtors have to go through, I that all of these are feasible options. I know. Uh, I'm going to guess, I almost feel like the tenant sleeping in the bed is... <laughs> Like the most normal. <laughs> I guess that one is the lie. Okay. I'm going with my same approach. I think number one is the lie that you had to pack up someone during a final walkthrough. And you can tell us now or you could just start yeah, telling no, I, your stories. The lie is actually the homeless person oh. living in. Which you think would be so normal, right? Yeah, like, you yeah, would think it'd be their I mean, squatters or a thing. Not I, normal, but like believable. It definitely believable, yeah. No, but I did have to. I came in on a final walkthrough representing the sellers. And I walked in and like her kitchen was not packed at all. Like every single drawer and cabinet was filled with kitchen stuff that she probably hadn't touched for years. So, yeah. And in order for the deal to get done, like she was just kind of crippled with Aww. a lot of emotions so Aww. you know i'm i'm a doer so i just rolled up my sleeves went and got a maintenance man found a cleaning lady in the building paid him cash hey help me clean help me pack here i am packing and like literally hours later we were able to get her out fully and so was it just the kitchen or was it like it was more than it was like the bathrooms the kitchens and like some of the other rooms too some of her stuff was packed but like she just couldn't get it done in time so, oh, yeah, wow. that was the day that like it all came together. I was like, wow, I could do anything. <laughs> but there was, I mean, everything else, like, was it clean? No. Or was it okay? It was dusty and mm. it was just like, we didn't have boxes. We didn't have tape. Like I was like having to run around and do all these things to get. So did you pack everything and like take it to her or like be like, here's all your stuff? Or were you just like, okay. No, she was, it's... she was literally standing in the corner, like <gasps> I said, crippled with emotions oh. that she couldn't even help Dare. me. She, she couldn't even help me. Oh, like that she was just lady. so, I know. <laughs> How long has she been there? <laughs> A long, long time. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. bad for her. Yeah. So that was definitely a first timer. Um, now it's kind of like, okay, seller, send me photos that you've. <laughs> <laughs> that you've actually that everything moved out. Is, yeah. Do you now have a checklist wow. of things that you do? Well, you, do you form your checklist based on terrible things that happen? Because that's how I do my things. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. You know. Uh, and now it's kind of like okay, like on the day of, it means it has to be broom swept condition. Every, and we go through this. We had the conversation with them, but something just happened that night, and I think you know. She just wasn't in the headspace to do it. So I just had to do it all for her. Poor lady. How old yeah. was she? I mean, she wasn't that old. Oh, really? I mean, I think she had some like, some like, you know, issues with her back and stuff. But um, yeah, it was like every drawer I had opened, like nothing was packed in there. I mean, if you imagine like every, every drawer was a dump drawer. Oh my God. Yeah. So some of the stuff I was like, do you really want this? Can I just give it to Rosie who's cleaning the house? 
you know so did she let you give anything away or she i think to there give was everything? just stuff i was like um this popcorn machine has got so much grease on it like do you sure you want me to pack this up and like mm. you know oh my so god there was some stuff that was just like okay this is just going to be given away and so then you brought in the cleaner and a maintenance man. Did the maintenance guy help you pack? Did they both help you pack? Yeah, luckily she was moving to another unit in the building. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, so it was almost like putting things in garbage bags if we can just to pull it upstairs and, and put it into her new unit. Wow. So it was kind of embarrassing because when I had gotten there, like the buyer's agent had gotten there too. So he was discovering it the same time I was. And so to mm. have the whole thing melt down in front of him and just being like, okay, well we thought it was completely packed you know and we've had this in other scenarios too so this is not the first time it's happened yeah. really I yeah i don't think i've ever had more than like a couple things left behind you know i've taken out plenty of trash yeah. but not a full unit's worth yeah or a, and even think, a full kitchen's worth i really think we in both of the scenarios we probably should have known that was coming because of the mm. personality of the seller mm. like it was kind of in the writing was on the wall a long time ago you but know, how long, now. at what point in your career was this? This is probably just a few years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, so you've like dealt with different personalities by this time. You're like, oh yeah. Yeah. Now this one for the sense. books. And you have now updated your checklist. Yeah. I probably have a video on it, which I'll show you guys. Oh after. my God. Yes. It's like everything was just everywhere. I walked in. I was like, what do you mean? Oh, that's packed? awesome. I mean, awful. It's <laughs> awful. Did you say she was packed? I or mean, she, she, just she like, got the gist, but I, th I don't think again, like I think she, there might have been some like medical stuff involved yeah. where she wasn't like really in her right head space mm. or like yeah i think sometimes it's hard to leave a certain space especially if you're not in the right head space or yeah. like or you think oh it's only a one bedroom it'll only take me a couple hours Ooh. or something you know yeah. and then all of a sudden and then you realize how much crap you have yeah oh my gosh but i did do that inspection with someone sleeping in the bedroom it was a tenant and it was a one bedroom and it was like me, the buyer, the buyer's mom, the agent was there, the per the tenant sleeping in the bed, the tenant's girlfriend. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> were they oh, both no, sleeping? Wait, she, no, he was. Oh, and she he, was awake. She was awake. Because she let you guys in, I'm sure. She was like just hanging out, doing her thing. Okay. And then the boyfriend was just like sleeping in bed and like he knew that there was an inspection. Of course. Was too tired, didn't want to get out of the bed. And so we're like... <laughs> In the bedroom, like it's inspecting the windows and the. Well, we can't get to that plug because the bed's up against oh the corner God. and he's sleeping on it. And so, oh, my buyers walked from that deal. Good, oh, really? Yeah, good. Why? I mean, not because <laughs> we. The guy probably would have never left on the day of closing. He that's, probably still would have been it, sleeping in bed. Oh. oh my God! Yeah. So. So somebody, the owner was an investor. They had tenant, or a tenant, and didn't tell them to leave. I think they told them to leave, but they were like, you oh, know what, I've had a long to... night, I'm really tired, so like, it's just, yeah, sometimes you're going to have to tenants, work around me. They just don't care, right? It's not, they it's don't. an inconvenience to them. They have no interest in their seller getting a better price or a better experience or whatever. A hundred percent, yeah, they, oh, it's know. nothing, I don't know. benefit for them, right. but that was definitely a first. So that one, I actually, I was like, what has happened to me that's been so traumatizing? And I couldn't think of so much, but you're just kind of like, whoa. Well, that's you know? when you want to like call them and be like, uh, hey, just so you know, your actions have now affected, like there's a domino effect, right? right? Yeah. Like now these buyers no longer move forward, which affects them. It affects the landlord or the seller. Mm -hmm. It affects you and your time. Yeah. Like there's, it's just this huge ripple effect. Yeah. And then you're kind of thinking like, okay, well. This isn't a good sign. Like, you know, when you're when you were working with buyers, they're they're counting on every good magic vibey feeling and, you know, good vibes and feeling good about their parents being on board and their mm -hmm. friends being on board and they're on board. But the moment that that starts to decline, you're kind of like questioning things and other things start happening. It does become this like big domino effect where it's like enough for it to, to kill the whole deal. Mm -hmm. So but they ended up in a better place. Good. They were better off. And um, yeah. And those tenants are probably still there sleeping. <laughs> hmm. But although the homeless person story, actually, I got that from somebody else. That's what everyone's been doing. <laughs> I was going to ask about it. Yeah. And actually, I, I hope it's true. I, from what I've told, I was actually sent a photo of this homeless man living in an attic space. In, here in Chicago? Here in Chicago. 
And the story is that it's like somewhere in West Chicago and it's like three roommates, three guys. They're on the third floor and then on top of them is like an attic space, right? Mm -hmm. Typical kind of three flat. Well, these three guys would leave for work every day. And I guess while they were leaving for work, their new fourth roommate in the attic was coming down. Oh, my God. And so things would start go missing. Like these guys would have like shirts missing and random things missing. And, they and so it was like haunted. I would think it was haunted. Yeah. And so and then they would hear kind of like movement from time to time. They're like, it's probably like a raccoon yep. or a possum. Up I've there. seen this photo. Have you seen? Did I show it to you? No, I don't. <clears throat> I think it's one of those urban legends that where the story changes. Are you sure? Because I could probably pull I'm up sure the there's also white tank top. Yes more than one homeless man living well, in a Well, okay, because I swear my friend was like this is my friend, my friend lived there. Pull it up. Okay, hold on. Don't worry, I'll find it too. We're okay. need to fact check. That's what I was thinking. I was like I really want to fact check. But so the story goes that <clears throat> they hear all this noise, they get on a ladder, they look up there and they see a guy up there and they're like what the hell? So the guy goes gets his phone, goes back up there and like literally takes a photo and it's a a photo of this guy and he's like in a you, you found it yeah i did oh you first okay hold on <laughs> let me see no <laughs> why same time man same time oh okay. right okay let's see i send so many like finding photos <laughs> when you send so many photos to someone okay i'm getting closer hold on okay it's gonna scare me when i see it because it always does but they they put the phone mm. up there turn the flash on take the picture <laughs> yep is he uh, yeah is he standing what is he doing no, he's kind of like who, he kind of like crouched this? down so i had an old client um an old training client actually that told me that the urban legend went with my client was that it was a friend of hers uh-huh that bought a house but there was a period of time when they were still transitioning and it was a couple of weeks where they hadn't fully moved in uh-huh so same situation they were putting stuff in the house, slowly moving in. She would go over, hear some noises, stuff would be missing. And, you know, one day she said, oh, wait a minute, there's this crawl space. And so she, you know, did the same thing, turned the phone on, put the flash on, kind of walked up the letter, stuck her hand up, took a picture and ran out. And that's the picture that I got. Okay, so but also when you're like pulling down the ladder to get into an attic, like this that's is why not... it's an urban legend. So the funny thing is, the, so in that photo, there's a, a picture. He's got like, he's got like a hanging rack with like all these shirts on there. And yeah. the, the story that I was told was that this all guy the was going down to the husband. No, that the shirt belonged to the roommate. Or the roommates, yeah, yes. The I got, and there. for me, it was that the shirt belonged Dude, to her I husband. Wanna, because the person that sent it to me, I don't want to say the person's name, but they were like, this is my husband's like friend was one of the roommates, and that the shirt that went missing was his. All right. Business people, crazy. We need, we need to know. So I feel like, I feel <laughs> like we, need to, we need to put the picture in the episode. Yes, we because will. Because when I first heard it, I'm like, okay, cool, it's true. Now... For the first yes. for the first time, I'm like, it's an urban legend. So it if you're really watching, happened, but the, we don't know the real story. Right. That's what I think. So we're watch, if you're watching on YouTube, we'll definitely put it on the YouTube, and if you're not, we'll put it on Instagram or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll. Put and it. if you've been if you've received this photo, please tell us your version. We of the need story. to know. Right. What is the where where did it originate, or what is your version of the urban legend? It's going to be someone's like Uncle Dan or something. <laughs> It's going to be like, no, that's Uncle Dan in the basement picking up a, like a soccer ball. It's not totally, even in Chicago. Totally. Right. I, uh, Can't yeah. Google like track images now? We, we should you be can, able to. Oh, you actually. can reverse image search Yes, it. you can. That's true. Because when did you first hear about this urban legend? Years ago, like a few years ago. Okay. Like probably definitely pre-pandemic. Yeah. I always feel like I like do everything else. Yeah. yeah pre um, but probably like three or four years before the pandemic. So okay. Because like, I first heard the legend in 28. I think it was 2017, 2018. Dang. Do you guys have someone in common that you know? Maybe. I don't want to spit the person's name because I don't want to like yeah. tarnish. <laughs> There's a possibility. We'll figure it out later. You can. But so anyways, that's we'll, my we'll third. Okay. Two truths and a lie. So hmm. it looks like I'm just carrying someone's lie. You are carrying. You are <laughs> just. just you are going. just furthering the urban legend. It's. But fine. I've been just spreading this story. I'm just like, how crazy is this story? Although I, 
there has got to be a true story. Maybe not with that picture, or, you know, but there's for sure homeless people that have well, lived yeah. in attics or basements or crawl spaces. Squatters oh. are a thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They That's show up not... and they just won't leave and you legally can't get rid of them in Chicago because they have rights. <laughs> right. Squatters' rights. What are the squatters' rights? I don't know what the actual rights are, but I know it's a thing. I don't know how long they have to be I think there. It's a, I, we learned this in real estate school. It's a, it's a long time. At least here in Europe, it's not a long time, but in Chicago, I think it's several. It depends months. on definitely depends on the state. Yes, and what their laws are. Yeah, but I, I, I saw on the news, I don't know, a couple of months ago about this family that stole a house. I'm like, how the hell do you steal a house? And they squatted in the house, and they yeah. the owner could not kick them out. Like the owner was arrested because they went over to the house and were like, "Hey, you need to leave," and then the owner wouldn't leave the house. The police came and arrested her because she was trespassing in her stolen house. You don't remember what state that was? No, but I, there's a video of it because... This is also something that's happened to someone in California. They had their house and their coach house was on Airbnb or something. And then, so someone moved in, paid the first month and then was like, I'd like to stay. Can we do it off mm. platform, basically? So they did that and then she just stopped sp paying and squatted. And like it was this whole deal, like basically tried to take over ownership of this house. I'm gonna look it up because it was there was it was recently, and there was a video like woman arrested trying to go into her stolen house. All right, and then Chris still has a few more showings for Earth. <laughs> you have some showings. A few okay. more stories. <laughs> cool. Just let us know where the showings are. All right, Crystal, tell us about the time you caught you caught a buyer pulling a fast one on you. Yeah. Oh, gosh. This is like probably one of my first or second, well, second deals I ever did because the first one I did, I sold a unit, sent out like um, a just sold postcard. Yeah. Got my first listing. And I remember it being like a really hot listing because it was just in Skokie. And this is when like before the yellow line went in. Oh, uh, you like so that's like wow. dating it, right? Way back, I know. Um, so like this is like when values weren't that crazy hot yet, but it was just about to get hot. And I remember, you know, when you're hitting the market and you're getting all these interests, we decided to sign a deal with this client, with this buyer. Turns out the buyer was like pulling a lot of tricks. Then we went back on the market. Had was on there for like a few weeks. And then, like, a lot more interest came in. All of a sudden, we had, like, multiple offers. You know, once you get one offer, and then all of a sudden, they start coming in, even though you've been on the market for a while. And we decided to go with this one offer. It had really good terms. And I'm looking through the names. And there's two names this time, right? And I'm like, wait a minute. This name looks really familiar. And I'm like, this is the buyer we had the first contract with, you know? Because, like, two months had lapsed, and you're kind of, like, you're showing all these properties, you're seeing these names, or... And like, you don't put two and two together. And I actually caught the guy and I was like, hey, yeah, so uh, this is you. And this is like, we had an offer with you the first time around. Why, why are you resubmitting again? He had used a different attorney, different realtor, put his wife on the contract. Um, so once I figured it all out, I was like, yeah, we're not going to sell it to you for this. You're going to have to pay five grand more if you want this property because we're not playing games with you. So we ended up actually paying five grand more than what he had originally offered the first time around. Too. Oh. Why didn't it work out the first time? I think he just got like wishy-washy. Oh, he got cold feet. Yeah, he was just kind of like went through attorney review, like never had the inspection. and was like, okay, you know, if you don't book the inspection, like, okay, where is this going? And yeah. so the deal had just fell, fall apart. We're like, okay, totally fine. We'll get another buyer. And yeah, he, he tried pulling a fast one. And then he came back with his wife at a lower price. At a lower price with a different realtor. No, sir, you will not. You will pay That's more. That's weird. Did you talk to the realtor and be like, uh, your yeah. client? What did the other yeah, realtor say? Yeah, because like in, in this area, it's like a lot of different cultures, right? And some of them sometimes carry the same last name. And so you're just kind of like, okay, yeah, like we're just, you know, a different client. But no, it was, I called them out and I was like, yeah, this is not going to work. I'm like, if your clients aren't going to pay this, we're not going to accept it. So, yeah. Mm, good for you. Thank you. I know, Standing especially firm. as, like, your second deal to yeah. be, like, actually. And I almost, like, I, I would have looked past it because I just saw, like, the primary buyer and I'm just, like, whatever, you know? And I think he had switched his name around because sometimes when you're, like, from a different culture, different background, like, yeah. you got 10 different names. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see? That, he didn't want you to know. Yeah, he's trying yeah. to be sneaky. Yeah. Well, oh, well. Yeah. 
he lost out. Or well, well I mean, he, no, he, he still he, got the house, but he overpaid. He paid more. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I'm fine with that. My client was happy. Did you? Um, do you know if they still live there? No, they were investors. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, tell us about the time you had to call a funeral home. Oh my God, that's like probably one of my greatest stories of all time. I would love to know oh, this story, like, please. Yes, <clears throat> another Skokie story. So sounds about right. Probably around around the time I started, right? So I started in the Winneka office, and I'm you know selling properties, doing just sold mailers. Well, one day I'm sitting like new agent in the office and someone, you know, secretary's like, hey, you have a call. Someone's calling you in your business line. I'm like, oh, my God, listing. <laughs> like, here we go. Hi, this is Crystal. And this lady gets on the phone and she's like, stop sending my dead mother business cards like she's dead. And, you know, I'm like, oh, sorry. OK, like, what's her name? Let me remove her. You know, so that's like what, 2012 started my career. Fast forward, it's like. 2016 or something i get a call from this lady gets transferred from the office so of course like i didn't realize it at the time so i pick up crystal tran she's like hi you know i have this four flat in skokie my mom died this many years ago and i'm looking to sell it and i swear to god it's the, it's same, the same lady. lady but she of course i'm not gonna ask her i'm not gonna be like hey did you call my office seven years ago and like bitch me out and talked about your mom dying and removing her from you know the mailing list so whatever, we had a great talk. Like, it sounded like she was totally on board. And then we hang up and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, let me go save her number. I go back and I'm like, shit, it got transferred from the office. So I don't have the client's phone number. So- Oh my God, I know where this is going, oh. right? So at this point, I'm just like, how am I gonna call her? I mean, like I call the office, like, hey, do you have that number? No, we don't have the number. They just call us, we just transfer. And so I'm like, okay, I have the address. But you have the address. I have the mom's name. So, you know, realtor hat, whatever, start Googling all these things, come across the mom's obituary. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. So I'm like, okay, I'll just give it a shot. Call the funeral home. Like, hey, Crystal Tran, realtor, you know. One of your clients. Yeah, I just spoke to, you know, you've actually serviced a client. Uh, you serviced a funeral here name, blah, 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 blah. Her daughter reached out to me and is actually wanting me to sell the property. But, you know, this is what happened. She got transferred from the office. We had a great talk. But then I don't have her phone number anymore. Do you mind sharing the daughter's phone number with me? And mind you, the mother had passed like seven years, seven, ago. eight years ago. And they were totally like, yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, let me just look it up. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> wait that actually work? It worked. And like they write around, they're like, yeah, what's your name? I'll take it down. And they like called me back and like gave me the information. I was like, whoa, that was way too easy. Uh, yeah. So when it, yeah, like just. When it, the things that realtors do. Really? You always a find home. a way. Where there is Dad, a will, there's a way. You call it a funeral home. I just can't believe it was the home. same person. Yeah. Well, because probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you were sending the cards, the death was probably fresh. Yeah, it probably was. And that's what it was. So yeah. she was a little upset, like, dude, she just died. Yeah. Stop trying to sell my house. I, right. get, I get calls all the time, though, for people who are like, take me off your mailing list. Yes. <laughs> like, all the time. I'm like, okay. My favorite are the people who are like, how did you get my address? How did you get my information? And I'm like. Public record, it's, dude. It's public record. Like. <laughs> It's on the tax records. I didn't do. I didn't even pay for this list. Okay, yeah. it's just there. Yeah, I can probably Google your name and find your address at this point. You know, the funny thing: a lot of people don't know that it's public record. Yeah, I know. It's well to everyone out there, especially it's, my dad. Dad. It is like all you need is a name and a city, and you can find so many things. So many things. Like it's it's crazy. You can look up tax liens on people. You can look up their purchase history publicly you don't need logins or anything no it's eerie yeah i mean it's great to have those resources when you need them yeah right so. that's true let's <laughs> let's steer this back to the positive things you can use it for yes. yeah no but i mean when in doubt like if you need to call someone's funeral <laughs> you know you might get the contact that you need so, so did you sell the four flat? I did. Nice. I did. I got in back. I got in contact with the seller and I didn't tell her how I got her number. 
I was just kind of like, hey, it was did great she even ask? She no. Just roll either. with the punches. It's roll fine. with the punches. Just, I wasn't going to be like. She probably assumed call her ID. Yeah. I wasn't going to be like, yeah, I called your mom's funeral. <laughs> no. <laughs> Talk to the funeral director to get your number. By That'd the way, do you still have odd. my postcards that I sent seven years ago? Right. Do you want to add you back on to my mailing list? <laughs> You're like, it's so weird. So I'm actually going through my records and I see that you're on my do not mail list. Mm, can I take that can away? Can I? <laughs> so funny. Oh, well, congratulations on the sale. Yeah, oh God, thanks. So funny. Yeah. That's, it's always a good story because I'm just always like, there's always a will. There's always a way. Like, never take no for an answer. And just, if you can't find it in one place, like, you'll get it somewhere else. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Problem solving. That's what we're about. That like, is 100% what we're about. Throw anything at us, right? Like, we'll find ways to figure it out. I agree. I mean, I think our job is really to be, like, creative, you know? Oh, absolutely. Super creative. Because I think the people that can only do, like, see deals in black and white don't really get very far. Whereas, like, oftentimes we're, like, solution makers, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes the answers are in front of us. And this is probably going to get to my second story, my next story, is... um. I was helping this client buy this house. Like, finally, her dream home had popped up, you know, what she wanted. And um, when we walked through the house, you could kind of, like, you could read the house. And you're like, okay, there's a divorce situation going on here. Mm -hmm. Like, photos of mom, photos of the kids, closets, like, a little half empty, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. only women's clothing, right? So my client makes this offer. We made a really good offer. And the wife was like, okay, well, one, like all of the fixtures are going to be excluded. Right. And she had these like beautiful chandeliers in there. And we're like, okay, well, my client's like, well, I want the chandelier. I don't want to go through and buying all this stuff. So let's give her even more money. Right. And client was still like, no, no, no. Like I have a designer discount. I'll let you use my discount. I'll order it for you. I'll pass you along and all this stuff. We're like, what's what the is, point of that? Right, Why not just do it for yourself? Why and do it so for someone else? The listing agent the whole time was just kind of like, yeah, she just doesn't want to do it, but wouldn't really elaborate, right? And I'm just kind of like thinking, like, wait a minute, we've given this lady like more than asking, more than the Schindlers would cost. Like, what the heck is going Something on? Something sentimental. Right? So and I'm thinking, like, she's moving into a rental. You kind of get the story, like, where are you moving to? She was moving into a rental. You're not going to put chandeliers right. into a rental. So me putting on my, like, okay, what the hell is going on, Cap? I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I think I know what's going on here. So the chandeliers, which she's a designer, right, are worth the value of money. And the house was actually under the name of her ex-husband. So if she sells the house with the chandeliers, who, who gets to pocket the money? Oh. The hubby, the ex-hubby does. So in my head, I'm like thinking like, what the hell is going on? So I put all this stuff together and I go to the listing agent and I go, hey, listen, I I think I could see what's going on here. And clearly, like we've offered her everything to the moon uh, to keep the fixtures. Um, Why don't we structure the deal so that like we will do a bill of sale for the fixtures and that the bill of sale will go to her, her. Right. And so when they close on the property, he won't get the money for the fixtures. She, she will problem right? solved exactly. Nice. So again, like being creative, like sometimes you're not getting the story from the listing agent, you know, and you kind of have to put on like your creative cap to be like, okay, what's the problem here? Yeah. What's the solution? Because like the listing agent wasn't offering that solution, and she knew the whole story. Mm. She knew why she wasn't letting go of the chandeliers, and she wasn't telling us, right? You know, so it was just kind of one of those moments. It's like it's the moment in your career where you're just like. Like, I call it the sixth sense, mm. which is like that realtor sixth sense where you're kind of like reading through people's reading, bullshit. Yeah, reading between the lines. Reading between like the lines. Something's going on that we don't have the full story here. Yeah. Or like, you don't even have to know much and you already know what's going on. You're like, say less. So <laughs> I it worked already out. know. So it worked out. So my client. They got the like, fixtures. They got the fixture. The girl got the money. The husband got the money for the house and we got the fixtures. And like, was, So did you end up then reducing the purchase price and putting that onto the bill of sale Correct. and the husband was fine with that he had no choice no oh, he had no idea i mean he well he did because he was signing off on yeah. it but either way what could he argue because at the end of the day he could have been like okay ex-wife of mine i'll promise you i'll give you 10 grand for the fixtures but like how often does it happen that right. the word is their bond no, not very often right especially so especially in at that, that point situation yeah. Yeah. yeah so we were like okay why don't we just protect her and just give her what she wants so she wanted the money so we gave her the money Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's really, right? Like, because you don't learn those things your first year or two within real estate. You're just kind of, like, doing whatever everyone tells you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're just going with it. 
But like when you really get into it and you could really read the room and read the situations and understand your, your clients and e even the people on the other side of the deal, you know, and have compassion for them too. Cause like I could have been like, well, what the hell the, get it. I've given you all this money and like not seen her side. But because I was able to put myself in her shoes, I could be like, okay, well, she's a divorced mom. She's going through this. Like, what is the, you know, like clearly she's downgrading from going from a house that she was owning or living in to a rental. Mm -hmm. So like money, you know, money is everything to them. Yeah. Like you don't know if child support's guaranteed. Right. That's true. Jeez. Yeah. So fun stuff. See, on my end, <laughs> I get to see from a financing standpoint, I get to see divorce decrees. Ooh. Those are always fun to look at. Did you not know that? Like long, no. like you have to read the whole thing? Yeah. Wait, you have to read it? What do you look for? So in any situation where there's a divorce, no matter how long ago it was, if they say, you know, used to be married, divorced, I need a divorce decree for the financing because we need to make sure that there is no additional debt. So I've never been asked for my divorce papers. Mm, <laughs> do you declare it? Like on your application for mortgages? Oh, so like when people... I don't remember if that's ever been an option. Single, married, divorced, oh, divorced. Yeah, it's on there. So if it's a yes, okay, I need a divorce decree because no matter husband, wife doesn't matter. If there are any sort of marital, you know, agreement, any sort of settlement, any sort of spousal support, and it's in there, I need to make sure I add that to your, your debt ratio. Is there a statute of limitations on that? If it's current. So if it, if you're currently paying. So I look for, I mean, I've seen some where they're 20 years old and it, you know, oh, okay, the child support expires when the kid's 18, the kid's 20 something years old now. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to put there, but we'd have to check. Yeah, I had not you, but I had another lender screw up. This was supposed to be an easy deal, but for completely forgot to like uh, add in like, um, what is it called when you pay for the wife's? Disposal support? Yes. Alimony. 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 Thank you. Yes. Yes. Alimony. Let, let's and let's he tell this again. It wasn't me. <laughs> he, it didn't, he didn't account for that. And so we couldn't get the loan done. And I was like, how do you not account for that? That's like a main thing that you look at. Like, again, status and like, was right? it Was there a deduction on the payroll or was it something separate where he had to have read the divorce decree to figure out this information? You know, I'm not even sure. And okay. it's probably the decree part. They're, they, they get long. And it gets complicated, too, because sometimes there's a diminishing amount. So, okay, you know, year one through five, it's this amount. Year X through this is this amount. So we're looking, you know, generally about three years out. So if it's, okay, well, now it's this amount, but three years from now it's this amount, I can use the lower amount, which is helpful sometimes, especially when ratios are really tight. But they're, they're fun to read. Wow, I had no idea. Does that get submitted into underwriting, too? Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And what type of information are on these things? On the divorce decrees? Yeah. Uh, literally every, everything that's settled in the divorce. So house, cars, kids, money. So like everything financial, not like the deets on. No, oh, like the, the details on what happened? Yeah, or like. Like you Susie know. cheated on John with Rob. Not like. So therefore, Susie's getting 75% of John's shit. Right. You know, like meeting minutes for condo yeah, docs. Like yeah. sometimes there's some really Is there like juicy prenup stuff? stuff. Like, oh, well, there was a prenup, but he cheated. So that I've broke the prenup. Yeah, so I've like, never seen one with one. Okay. I've only seen, I mean, I've only seen a handful, but they were, they were all just, okay, you know, Susie owes John, John owes Susie. The kids get this, expires when they're 18. Here's your amount. It's pretty black and white and cut and dry. Like you can't argue with it. That's it. So if there is some sort of, liability technically i added to the debt ratio so they have to be able to cover it i have one closing tomorrow where she had one and she i got divorced in 2012 i'm glad you've been on your marriage that long semi degree <laughs> please and thank you and she's like what i'm like so and there I, has I told to be a why. place where you can go like download your decree i guess yeah actually she she didn't physically have it she actually had to contact her attorney um because it is you know publicly recorded so the attorney just had to go back through the courts and get it, it took a day it was really easy and she understood why once i told her why because some people Especially, you know, with what we do, we ask for things, everything, personal documentation. And a lot of times people are like, well, why do you need this? I'm like, well, because you want me to give you hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I need all pages of your bank statement. Calm down, dude. Right. You're like, I don't care how much money you spent. I don't I care. I really, I don't care how much money you spend. I don't care what you spend, spend it on. It. I don't care how much. Have you ever been in the process where 
you've been pre-approving a husband and wife situation and all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, the wife's like, yeah, he's going to get pre-approved or she's going to get pre-approved and all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's being some money spent here, maybe on a second rental. <gasps> I've, so I've never, Like a second I've never life. had that, but I have started several arguments because, you know, if it's a couple and we're having a pre-approval call, I'm disclosing every, I mean, they're there. I'm like, okay, you guys cool. I can say things and yeah. Of course so, they mean, have to say yes, right? They, exactly. So, on the spot. So that's. So there, I mean, I've never run into anything that's story worthy. It's just, you know, credit scores are farther off than they thought, or there was extra debt that they didn't know about. Those things start arguments. Like the other, the partner didn't know about? Correct. Like, what do you mean you have this X number of dollars of monthly payment? Why is your score so low? What did you miss? I'm like, guys, you want to call me back? Yep. <laughs> it's never You're like, ended I'm just going to put you on mute. Yeah, it, it's never ended Record, a transaction, no. <laughs> but yeah, I hear things. I see, I see everything, but people don't realize that I truly don't care. Yeah. Like, well, see, we don't get those kind of stories because like nobody has yeah. to really disclo disclose those things to us. Like yeah. maybe if they're getting separated or they have a new girlfriend or, but like nothing like where it's like, oh, we don't get the juicy detail. Yeah. I mean, where you say a realist, it's not black and white for me. It is. Yeah. Like there's, there's no emotion in it for me. I mean, I feel for them as a human, but there's no emotion. It's either yes or no cut and dry. Here are the facts. Here's how much money you have. Here's how much money you make. Here's, you know, here's what your credit score is. And I get yelled at about that a lot, too, because all these things are my fault. I love the uh, people who take a screenshot of their, like, Equifax. Credit karma. <laughs> but then you, like, actually run their credit, and it's way lower. Ooh, and their those are... tenants do that, and then they, like, screenshot. And I'm like, well. I'm sorry that Equifax told you that it was seven ninety nine, but you're at six fifteen. Oh, my gosh. Does that happen a lot? Yeah. It does, because they're not, I mean, they give you a general idea. You can kind of monitor change, but it doesn't see everything. Right, and it's only one of the three. It's only one of the three also. It's a soft inquiry of one of the three. So you could have things reporting three, on three the other two. Three credit bureaus, that Thank is. You. Thank you. We'll put those descriptions in the show notes. All right, we're running a little short on time. I'm sorry. I know you have a hard stop. Yes, so. I'll stop rambling. I think your last story for us is when you got accused of damaging a ceiling. Oh my God. Yeah. This is a crazy seller. Don't you love the story? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. The, the seller ceiling. Is just, yeah. Okay. So I sold a house. The neighbor next door called me to sell her house and she was really nice. Like did a hard interview on the phone. Great. Cool. T totally fine with that. We get the listing and we go in and it's like one of those, it's like she's staged her place. It looks like home goods. And she thinks it's like the most amazing thing in the world. And it's like, it feels like home goods in there because like you can't literally walk around stuff because there's so much stuff in there. There's aisles full. Of there's just like fake plants and vases and this and benches. And it's just like randomly there. And you're just like, oh, okay. But anyway, so we start showing the house. Could have probably got it sold within the first week, but she obviously wanted to play attorney. But anyways, we would do the showings and we would leave. And then I'd get a message from her. She'd be like, who's touching the top of my curtain? And like, mind you, the curtain is like top, top, very high up to the wall. And I'm like, she's like, there's a ball missing off of my curtain rod. I'm like, well, it's not us. I don't know where it is. I didn't hear it fall. And I don't think anyone's going to be touching her curtain rods, right? Whatever. Fine. Next showing, she messages us, sends us photos. My ceiling has got a hole in it. And it's like a nine, 10 foot ceiling. You are tall. I'm like, right? And I'm just like, ah, what is this lady? And it's on a stairwell too. And I'm like, what does she think we're doing? Like, do we have like a broom and we're like knocking things off? Or like, do you think that like I got the buyer to climb on my back and be like, let's punch holes into the ceiling. So it was like all these things where it wasn't making sense. And she kept blaming us after we would leave the house. And I'm just like, I don't even know what to say to all this. Like, where do you think I would get a ladder and put it on a stair to punch a hole in your and ceiling? And also, why would I even do that? Yeah. That hurts the sale. Right. So I was just kind of like, and eventually, like, we just kind of parted our own ways because she thought her house was worth so much more. We could have gotten the deal done and it, and it should have happened. But, like, she wanted to play attorney. Every time we left, she was giving us, you know, issues about, like, this, that. And I'm like... I mean, your walls are like dirty black and you're like, you're worried about like something missing up here. I'm like, there's stuff missing all over the house. Mm. Do you think it was like, um, 
something where she was like, oh, maybe if I blame them, I can get them to like take care of it or pay for it or something. No, I think she was just like, I think she was just making up a lot of issues in her head that didn't exist there. Mm. So wait, was there actually a hole in the ceiling? There probably was, but it was like, it wasn't, it, we didn't do it. <laughs> Are you sure? I, I mean, if I can get a client on my back, I, that's all, I was like, how am I going to do this? I'm literally like, I'd have to get on someone's back and be like, raise me up. Like, let me. <laughs> Let get me, to the ceiling. Let me jump on your back real the, quick. Yeah, I just want to punch a hole in the ceiling really quick did before it, we leave. Did it ever I just sell? Fuck with the cellar. Mm-hmm. Did it ever sell? No, it didn't. It didn't. She sell. still owns it with her hole in her ceiling. Yes. Well, you know what? Good for her. Yeah. Hopefully, she's patched it up by now. Yeah, and honestly, it was like over a million dollar listing, but we had to walk away because, like, just like the client that didn't move out the same day, like the day where I had to help them pack up, like she had that kind of personality and like you see it coming from a mile away that it's going to be a shit show. So just like these two things was enough for me to be like, okay, I am good mm-hmm. yeah. because I've ha- I brought you a great offer. You didn't want to take it. You told me that unless the buyer signed off on this and this and this on the contract that you're not going to sign it. I'm like, why don't you let the attorneys handle it? She's like, no, my attorney told me that I need to get this. And I'm like, who's your attorney, right? I'm like, who? So it was just. The attorney told her nothing. She probably didn't even have an attorney. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. So stay away from the crazies. Wouldn't that be nice? Don't you wish it was that easy? Just stay away. Okay. Yeah. That's my motto for life. It should be like a FICO score, but it should be like a crazy score. Like, what's your crazy score? I really think we should have some sort of like... social score? No, but like for realtors, like where you can rate clients and then you like go look them up and it's like, oh, this one's going to be... Like a Facebook, there's like, there's like, are we the Facebook group of, are Are we we dating dating the the same same person? Oh, yes. I always see you on there. I know. I'm always like, yes, you all are all dating him. (laughs) This is why I stay home. (laughs) That's it. I just stay home. Mm -mm. (laughs) Mm-mm. I'm sorry, I try to avoid That's the crazy. That's why you want to move to the suburbs. Exactly. I'll start over out there. Oh, my God. Avoid the Amazing. crazy, guys. Well, Crystal, thank you so, so much for uh, recording with us today and being on the pod. Why don't you tell people where they can find you? So at Crystal Tran Team on Instagram and Facebook. Um, Hunt Chicago. Oh, yeah. HuntChicago.com. If you guys want to message us on there, we have a quick chat. You can call us. <laughs> yeah. Here. I... Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. I had a question, though. One question. The question. Oh, you're right. We do have a couple of just last-minute questions. Yeah. Just so you know, on time, we have 15 minutes. So. Well, okay, are you ready for the question? Oh, yeah. Would you rather be able to be invisible or be able to fly? Ooh. I think fly. <sighs> yeah, because it's better. Yeah, and plus, if I was invisible, I'd probably be like... You know, appear, like seeing what my friends were saying about me, and I might not like that. No, I'm just joking. I but, would. Yeah, you would. Well, we well, yeah, creepy. Know. Like, fl- I, I like being efficient. So, like, flying to me sounds amazing. Like, do yeah. you have to sit in traffic? Oh my god, I'll just fly to Wilmette. I'll meet you there. <laughs> like, see, you're think not. Of how much time it would save? Yeah. Nobody, when they answer this question, are thinking about logistics. We're all thinking about logistics. Really? Because by the time you fly to Wilmette, your hair is going to look like shit. Okay. Are you going to are you going to carry an entire And you're hair worried about your you? hair. My hair would be fine. <laughs> okay. You know what? They make little bonnets that you can wear. I wear them when I sleep. Do you wear them when you fly though? Those things will fly off your head. And you're invisible. You don't know how fast is. I'm flying. You don't I'm sorry, Terrence. Fast but... enough to where traffic is going to the, the wind is going to bother you. If you're flying at car speed, hair is going to be a mess. So I'm, what what is this invisible like? I can go anywhere and do anything I want, and nobody's like gonna ghost, bother me. Like the movie See, Ghost, I'd, I'd, I'd be like a ghost, and I could travel. I could go. I could. We said you were invisible. We didn't say you were a ghost. Yes. We just, I, well, I could travel, so I I'm invisible. I can fly for free. He she thinks think he's I just gonna walk. sneak on a plane How without I, bumping into anyone. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fly during rush hour. I'm just gonna go. Like when, I, for example, when I flew to Arizona last week, I had a six a.m. flight, I had an entire row to myself. Nobody bothered me. I mean, except the flight attendant when they asked me if I wanted snacks. But I, the only downside is I won't get snacks. Okay, we'll see. No, you don't have me sold. I know. I'm, not I'm sold. still flying. Whatever. And.
And our last question, this is new, but I'm excited for it. Um, so knowing where you are now and everything you've been through, what advice would you have given yourself when you started in 2012? Oh, wow. Stay away from the crazies. <laughs> Stay away from the crazies. <laughs> oh, hmm. Oh, God, that's a hard one to think about. Because I don't know if I regret anything. You know, I don't yeah. really regret. Maybe if anything is probably to have left the company. I probably should have. <laughs> Ooh, shots fired. Shots fired, yeah. But, like, not to be comfortable where you're at. Yeah. You be know? open to change. Be open to change. See what's out there. And don't get tied in. I think when I worked at the hair salon, I worked there my entire career. So I worked there for 13 years. I started off as a shampoo girl assistant then became a stylist. But, you know, at that point, I should have came to the city and, you know, worked at a hair salon in the city. I stayed there for 13 years. Same thing with, you know, working at the brokerage. I was there for over 10 years and I didn't leave for 10 years. I had become all these other companies. And I just kind of stayed around just because I was self-sufficient. Right. And, Comfortable. Right. And when I finally moved and I was like, wow, it's so much better on the other side and all these things I was afraid of like I shouldn't have been and I feel dumb for staying for that long not that you want to like jump around all the places but like if there's a place that's not serving you move right leave leave break up with that dumb but you got man. from Don't them what you needed to right and it made you a better and Agent, honestly, I, stylist, and then you, you move to somewhere better. Yeah. And honestly, I don't think I would have done it any different. Now I was saying that like the timing was perfect for us. And like, it, it's almost going to be a year there. And like everyone unanimously on the team is happy. So it makes me happy. You I'm, know, I'm right there with you. I did the same thing. Well, thank you everyone so much for listening to another episode of Realty Chicago. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have an anonymous story you would like to share with us for us to read and discuss, there will be a link to um, the Google form in the show notes. I've already said it. Find us on social media and all of that. And if you have or know anyone who has some good stories that you think would be a good guest to come on the episode, please don't hesitate to reach out or nominate them or... However, tag them. This tag is who I think them. we should nominate who? to come. The people that told us those stories about that picture. You know oh. what? Oh, that'd be a good episode. On the same time, and yes. then we'll be like, "This is an intervention." Tell us your story. Like, who's got like, the who truth? Who originated this story? I, you know what? I'm who's gonna text lying? my client. I'll I'll give you the contact too, so you guys could work it out. That might be like a really fun like. That would be really fun. surprise them. Yeah, and just like keep following the story until like no, well, someone told me this, someone told me that. Yeah, until, it's like an urban until legend. you get we to the guy. The, yes. It'd have to be a spinoff. We'll have to do a spinoff. Chicago urban legend. Ooh. The real T, real T Chicago urban legend. Is he homeless or is he just an average Joe? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me.